Hey everybody, Carl Shue from Snorkel.tv here, and today I would like to share what I learned today. All right, and what I learned today is that when you're using a back ease, you can specify how much it overshoots its target. Now, a back ease is one of my favorite eases in the world, um, and it overshoots its target destination and then goes back to where it should be. You'll see here I have an X of 400 marked by this blue line. And all of these boxes are following the same tween parameters, except for the fact that I'm sending <coughs> ease params, ease parameters in, of 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so by adjusting that amount, I can specify an object to overshoot its target by a greater amount. And I never knew about this until today. And I found out about this on the Green Sock forums. Um, and I was like, wow. I've always wanted to adjust this, and now I know how to do it. So what we're going to do is go into a simplified file just to show you how you can adjust ease params on a back ease and also an elastic ease. Okay, the code here is all standard green sock stuff, telling the box to take two seconds to change its X to 400, specifying an ease of back ease out. The new stuff here is ease params, where we can send in an array of values. The back ease only takes one parameter though. So let's get out of this file. I'm going to go to a very simple demo file here. And just to show you, we'll open up our action script here. And we have a tween here called box tween. And we're saying, hey, tell the box to take two seconds, move to 400, and we'll do a back ease out. Now notice there are no ease parameters set up here. And you will see that the box overshoots to there. I put in a little on update function that leaves this little yellow line behind once that box gets to its maximum value. Boom, there I am, and then it goes back. So you can see how far it overshoots even after the tween has played. Um, I might talk about that in a little bit, but let's get to the heart of the matter. Um, after I specify my ease, I'm also gonna say, hey, let's throw in some ease params, colon, not a P, not an L, but a colon. I hope you're watching. And then since we're putting in an array, we put it inside of brackets. And let's just say one. Let's test this out. And you'll see, yeah, it didn't overshoot all that much. Boom, bonk, all right. And then now we'll just go up to something like four, okay? And I know you guys don't wanna see me testing different values, but you'll see that four went much farther. Okay, so there it is. My button will replay that ease. And in case you're curious about how that line gets left behind, real quick, I have an on update function being called here. And what it's doing is always just checking to see whether or not the box has started moving backwards. It's, it's quite primitive. I set up this variable called box one previous x, set it to zero. And then every time that tween updates, I say, hey, is the box's current x less than the previous x? And if so, it'll say, I'm on my way back. It'll tell a line to go to the box's previous X. And then we're also killing the on update because I don't want that on update to keep running. So we use an update too. I'll probably use a little, do a little tutorial on that Jim Jam in a little bit. Uh, but right now, that's the basics of it. And every time this update happens, the value of box one previous X is always being reset. So this is a nice little way just for me to leave a marker behind of where that tween stops. Okay, so that's the back ease. Let's jump over and do an elastic. And for this, I'm gonna kill that function real quick like. Okay, and let's get rid of these params again altogether. And let's change my ease to an elastic ease out. All right. So the elastic ease shoots past the target and then does that little wiggle move here like a rubber band. So really nice and playful and fun. Well, we can also change the elasticity of that ease and how far it overshoots by adding some ease params as well. So let's just say ease params for this guy, colon, and then in hard brackets, let's just do something like, let's put in a two real quick, okay, just one. And you'll see that is way elastic right now. It just goes crazy, it goes way too far. 
So let's start bringing that number down to maybe uh, 0 0.5. And you will see not so elastic, right? It's not shooting off stage. And as that number gets smaller, you're probably going to see a little bit less bounce. All right. So there you go. That's changing one parameter. And then there's also another parameter here that we can change. There's the amplitude. That was the first one. And then we also have the period. Let's make the period um, 3. All right, see what that did? That put the kibosh on the elasticity. When that period is a, a period, what the heck are you talking about? I'll tell you in a second. Um, when we change that number around, you'll see how uh, greatly it affects everything. Let's make that 0.2. All right, and now you get a lot of bounciness. All right, it's going way ridiculous. Magic browser, here we go. So here, the internet is going to help us solve what is this amplitude and period. Well, here is a sine wave, and the amplitude refers to the height of that wave, and the period is basically how wide it is or the amount of distance it takes for one revolution. All right, and if you go to this, just do a Google for sine amplitude period, you'll find this thing. Um, so here you'll see that we have a period, an amplitude of 10, but the period is much narrower, giving us more erratic, a, a tighter curve, I should say. All right, and if you're wondering, well, what's, why is math important? Well, um, suppose you wanted to do this awesome thing here. Um, it's showing you how a piston speed um, when driven around a cylinder here. Uh, its acceleration and deceleration is actually being literally driven by a uh, sine function. So this was built in Flash, yes. And you'll see if I change, if I make the period, it looks bigger, you'll see that it's very slow because it's going to take more time for it to get do one revolution and the chart can't even go that wide. But if we bring that period down, have it take less time, you're going to have tighter curves here. And let's just bring this thing all the way up and hit start. And there you go. So maybe you can try to equate these values with what you're seeing with that elastic curviness. All right. Um, the next section we're going to go into talking about um, what's happening behind the scenes in these easing equations. Again, it's bonus round stuff. Bye-bye, Magic Browser. Wow, that's even worser. -er. Okay, so those two numbers play in conjunction. Uh, one will affect the other. So how do I know about this stuff? Here's the bonus round. Well, it's all in the documentation. And if you go to the AS Docs for GreenSock, under Tween Max or Tween Light, you're going to find Ease per I'm sorry, Tween Max, Ease Params Array, an array of extra parameters, blah, 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 uh, beyond the standard first four. Okay, you might be asking, well, what are the standard first four? Well, if we check out our easing equations, you will see that eases such as a circ ease take parameters of T, B, C, and D. All right, um, and those are just four numbers that refer to the duration of the tween, the current time of the tween, how far the thing has to tween, and things like that. If we go to the Adobe documentation, you get a little bit more verbose explanation here. T, current time, initial value, total change, duration of the motion. And for the back ease, which I believe I'm looking at right now, the fifth parameter you'll see um, specifies the amount of overshoot. Okay, so it's well documented that there are these additional parameters both on the GreenSock site and in the Adobe documentation. They're both using the same tweens provided by Robert Penner, I believe. Um, and if we go over here to, uh, we just looked at circ four standard ones. If we look at elastic here, you will see that there are two more parameters. You have the amplitude and the period. For those of you who are familiar with sine waves and how this equation is being uh, processed, uh, that's the amplitude and that is the period. You can Google those two things and have fun. Furthermore, in Flash, if you open up the actual easing equations such as the back ease, let's get out of here, 
you'll see that the back E's takes in your standard T, B, C, D, and then also S, which is the uh, what we're going to call the overshoot for the back E's. And by default, it's set to 1.70158. And if you want to look at the elastic E's, you'll see also that it takes the amplitude and parameter, just like the documentation states. And thank God for these people who write this stuff, because I would never understand it. All right. So, guys, just want you to know as a final wrap-up, thank you for calling me, um, that by specifying ease params for the back ease and the elastic ease, you can change how those eases actually perform. All right, so if you ever wanted more overshoot in your back ease, well, there you go. You can say ease params for. All right, guys, take it easy.